What's your name? I'm Will. You're up, Will. What do you got? I'm Penn State Athletics, so I'm filming. <laughs> You're filming. What's your name? No worries. Ryan from the Asbury Park Press. Okay. Uh, just can you just kind of give us an idea what this day was like, what the last couple of days were like, how strange it was, obviously, these circumstances? What the day was like? Okay, it was a regular pregame day for us. Uh, just the head coach wasn't there. Got here to the stadium. Did, went through our normal ritual. There was nothing out of the ordinary or, or anything that seemed overtly strange about the day. What's your name? Garrett Seven. What do you want to ask me? Um, I guess going into that decision to kick it on the field, did it ever cross your mind to maybe go for it? Yes, it did. Why? Is there another part to that question? Why did you decide to kick it? Well, I decided to kick it. It was fourth and 11, fourth and 10 from the 11. Um, we had just run what we thought was one of our very good choices in that distance. So we decided to, go, to kick the field goal. What's your name? I'm Josh. Where are you from? ESPN. Here we go, Josh. All right. Well, you, you talked about how the days leading up to today was. What was it like being on the sideline at this game, you know, in terms of the atmosphere and, you know, you kind of trying to spearhead, you know, Rutgers today? Was it unusual for you? Did it feel odd without Kyle Flood by your side? What were the emotions that ran through your mind today? Um, I worked for a guy for a while that said to take the emotion out and coach the player, and that's the situation I found myself in today. I had to help the coaches as well as I could, help my players as well as I could. It wasn't overtly odd or anything of that nature. Um, it happened really quick at the end of the week, so it, it's kind of like uh, a guy coming off the bench and, and he does okay, and then all of a sudden he's got to play a full game the next day. You know, it was, wasn't a big deal. Really, it wasn't. A lot of people making it out like it was a lot bigger than it was. What's your name? I'm Sam Bruschetti. What do you want to ask me, Sam? I want to ask uh, how much was Darius Hamilton able to do this weekend? Was it a boost to have that captain back and have him in rotation? I'll tell you what, I was excited for Darius to get back out and play. Um, you know, he had been chomping at the bit to come out and play. Uh, I left it to Coach Panagos. And Coach Flood, they talked about how many players he would have in the rotation. So I'm sure Coach Panagos kept him to that. I want to give somebody else. Um, Tara, for the record. When um, all of the negative attention, which I know you're aware of leading into this game, do you think it wore on the players at all? I don't think it wore on the players. Not at all. What, what kind of, what gave you that confidence in what you saw? From, because the result was obviously not what you'd hoped. Well, I don't think the, the result was an issue of negative attention on the program or, or, ne or the situation uh, with the head coach being uh, suspended. I think that uh, Penn State did a good job of executing their plan better than we did. Uh, they ran the ball very effectively against us. Uh, like I said, outside of they had a two-play drive in the second half where Barkley uh, had two carries for a touchdown. And outside of that, the defense played pretty decent in the second half. Now, it's a 60-minute game. And we can't talk about playing decent for, for 14 minutes. You know, you got to play good for 60 minutes to beat anyone. But it, I don't, in my heart, I don't believe it's distractions that were the, uh, that caused the result we had today. The gentleman in the blue shirt holding the phone. You got to tell me your name first. Steve Edelson, Asbury Park Press. But you are down um, a number of players. Do you think that lack of kind of manpower uh, is affecting the team? No, I don't. I don't think that lack of manpower is affecting the team. I think that on offense, we've got to be able to, to live by one of our first tenets. We've got to be able to run the football. And we've got to be able to block the guy and move a person against his will. And we've got to be able to protect the passer and give him an opportunity to throw the football. We've got to run crisp routes. And we've got to, we got to run the ball better than the ball the players block for. On defense, the tackler's got to tackle. You've got to, make, you've got to take the adjustments. From the defensive staff, you got to be able to fit the runs, you got to stop the run, and you got to wrap up and bite the ball and bring the guy down. It had nothing to do with the players that weren't there. The players that were there have have the same have been trained the same way and have the same responsibility. The young lady with the green shirt on and the glasses. All right, you just filming. Man, you're just filming. Well, coach, oh, yes, sir. Do you feel like you were battling starting field position all day today? Yeah, you know, we started out backed up. Uh, and then, you know, people are going to feel like it was a crowd noise that caused that first penalty. That wasn't the case. Um, 
I think I haven't looked at the starting field position. It felt like that at times. I haven't had a chance to see the average drive start. So I, I, I don't want to give you an uninformed answer. But there were times where I thought we had a long field to go on quite a few occasions. Well, of your first 12 drives, only one started beyond the 25. The, the, then the, you've answered the question for me. Yes, sir. Kevin Xavier, Daily Targo. Coach, the game seemed to swing in the second quarter. They put up 21 points. What do you think happens in the second quarter? Well, let me try to run it through my mind here. But the last touchdown they got uh, was solely on me. I, I didn't catch a uh, deficiency that we have, and they had the 80 yard, that big 80 yard, I think it was 80 yard run, might have been a 70 yard run. Um, and that changed the complexity some, somewhat more than it already had. You know, they drove the ball on us a couple of times to get those those first two touchdowns that they got in the second quarter, and we couldn't put anything together consistently to keep a drive going outside of the one that we had uh, in the first quarter. So our lack of consistency and, and leaving the defense out there to just have to stop so many plays, just it rolled against us at some point. The gentleman leaning in with the glasses behind the guy with the checkered shirt. Josh Elsass, our football show. Coach, obviously no one wants to become a head coach this way, but are you at least having fun doing it? I didn't have any fun tonight. Um, I'm sure that it, no one would want to become a head coach this way. Um, but sometimes you don't get to choose the situation that you're in. So you just have to accept the brutal reality of the situation you're in, and you have to face it head on. And it's my responsibility on game day to make sure that the young men execute the plan. And I failed in that today. The gentleman behind you. Mark Poole, I'll turn in there. Coach, does the loss sting any extra based on the fact that fans and players to some degree have been trying to make this a rivalry over the past year? No. Do you consider Penn State and Rutgers to be rivals? Well, when you look at the all-time series, I think that Rutgers has beat Penn State twice. And uh, PSU has won now 24, maybe it might be 27, I'm not sure. I would think that we would have to win some more games against them before someone would call it a rivalry. This gentleman here. No worries, Jerry from the Asbury Park Press. We've got a lot of people here from Asbury Park. Is there anyone left in Asbury Park? <laughs> oh, no, we left. Why didn't Redding play? Why didn't Redding play? I didn't put Redding in. Would you Why have had the authority to? Pardon me? Would what? you have had the authority to? I would have. Right, okay. But what, why didn't you put him in? I didn't think the situation called for Hayden to go into the game. How do you feel about Laviano's play? I'd have to go back and watch the film. I don't want to give you an answer that's not fully qualified. How much did you and Coach Flood talk this week about making a quarterback change? It was all just left up to you once the game started. We had a con two conversations about it. Back with two more questions. Uh, Coach, uh, a lot of eyes have been on Rutgers. Seven arrests uh, along with Flood being suspended. Say Coach Flood. I beg your pardon? Say Coach Flood. Coach Flood. Thank you. Uh, is this program out of control? And even if it's not, what kind of impact has all this had on the team? Program is not out of control, and I'm not going to speak on the impact that it's had on the team. Coach, a lot of the big runs came up the middle. Did you see anything, you know, before looking at the film? Was there any deficiencies that you noticed, or uh, mental mistakes, or alignment that was out of whack that allowed them to gash you for so much up the middle? I can't give you a qualified answer to that because I wasn't with the defense all week. Um, I was on the headset with them. <coughs> Coach Rossi and Coach Frazier were talking about the adjustments that needed to be made and where we were deficient on those runs that were big. Um, they did a, we did a good job. They did a good job adjusting to them in the second half, and a couple got out against us in the, in the second half after the adjustment was made, and we've got to play better. And all, in all three phases. He said two more. Are you allowing any more? No, let's go. Thanks, Thank you.